Okay, here's my end of day update. We've had a nice, good, productive day. My friend John and I have done all the fuses. Actually, John did all the, the remaining fuses. We've thrown in the cells. John also put in the balance wires. Got all that up and running. Uh, I'm currently balance charging it on the eye charger. And uh, it's all looking pretty good. Currently, uh, I've put in about, what is it, 14, 14 amp hours into it over the last seven hours. I'm just charging it at, running this at 2 amps into 24 cells in parallel. So really, really um, low current. And I'm quite keen to make the very first charge nice and gentle, um, no rush. The voltages currently are, let me see, this end, uh, 3 3.80, 3.81, 3.8, 3.84, 3.83, 3.8, and 3.68. So that's the low one. And I'll have to pay, keep an eye on that, see what's going on there. Um, whilst we were... Whilst we were plugging in the cells, there were a couple of issues that came up that we would like to improve on next time. One was this cell here is a perfect example. It has the problem where the cells are quite wide apart. And if you're trying to plug that in by putting pressure on the top cell, uh, it buckles the strapping. So I've uh, hot glue gunned those together so that they're a solid unit. Um, if, if you have a pair that jiggle like that, then it, there's a space in between them and it would be worth hot gluing them um, just so they don't make too much of a mess of the strapping. The other issue that we had is the amount of solder we put on the... Um, amount of solder we put on the connectors was a bit too much and that has the effect of making it a lot less springy so getting the cells in requires a bit more effort which becomes an even greater issue when you've got um, cells that are um, apart so this particular one here is really tight that was not very nice so next time we'll pay a bit more attention to minimising the amount of solder we use and we'll make sure that any cells that are a bit like that we'll slap some hot glue gun on there to keep them uh, together. Otherwise it seems to be going quite nicely. Um, so the plan is to charge and discharge this, these a few times plug it into the solar system, run it, see how it goes. I'm going to plug in a, once I've balance charged it, I'll connect it up to the solar system, put a cell logger on the balance leads. I'm going to try doing without a BMS for a while and just monitor it closely and see how it goes. Um, just to see if I can actually do without a BMS because the, a normal balancing BMS does three things. It balances, and if I'm paying a particular attention already with a cell logger, then I probably don't need to be at the automatic balancing function. Um, I can balance it manually every now and then, maybe once a year or however often it goes out of whack. And I'm expecting that... If I ran this in the solar system, charged it normally without a BMS, without any automatic balancing, I wouldn't expect it to drift out of whack uh, that often. And when it does, I can just use the eye charger to rebalance it. Otherwise, I just keep looking at the cell logger to make sure that the different levels are okay. Um, the other thing about a BMS does is it disconnects when the voltage gets too low. 
But in my case, if I've got this all hooked up to a um, an inverter, it already has a low voltage cutout, so that's covered. And then the other issue is overcharge, and I've got my solar charge controller set to only charge up to uh, 28 volts across the seven groups, which is effectively four volts per group, which is nice and low, and it won't go above 28. So that should cover the overcharging issue. So um, that's all the all the functionality that a BMS gives you. The other thing about a BMS that I don't like is most of them don't tell you anything about what's going on. They have no, uh, a lot of the small ones have no LEDs to tell you that everything's fully charged. They don't tell, tell you uh, whether they're doing any, any decent balancing at all. You have to go and look and measure the voltages yourself manually. And so if the BMS is not working, you haven't got a clue. So I'm going to try with try this without a BMS for a while, and just see how that goes. Um, but I will put in some breaker switches. Um, so I've got fusing, I've got breaker switches. I'll have a cell logger to manually eyeball the voltage. Um, and because I'm playing with these things all the time, uh, I'll be looking at that probably at least once a day. Um, so that's the plan at the moment. It's all go, go, go. Uh, that's it for now though. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.